and welcome to Jermaine All Natural. I am Jermaine Ryan, and this month is June, and this is also Black, Black History, History, a piece, a piece every, month. every month. But this month I'm bringing you a two piece. So this month is gonna be Black, Black History, History. History, two pieces, two pieces. This, month. this month. It's June, and it is Pride Month, and I had to do something for Pride Month. Um, let me show you, wearing my Steven Universe shirt. Hold on, Garnet, made of love. Voiced by Estelle Darlings. You might know her uh, from her song American Boy with Kanye West. Uh, but, you know, I felt since that it is Pride Month, I felt only like I had to do something. In, a, in addition to that, today is June 9th. Today was the funeral for George Floyd, may he rest in peace. And it made me think, okay, how do I tie these two things together? And it brought me to the person that I am highlighting this month. Now, before I go into it and who the person is, I do wanna say that 2020 has stopped some stuff. It has paused a lot of things with all of the uprising and everything that's happening, George Floyd being the straw that broke the camel's back. A lot of things have changed. A lot of things still need to change. And if you follow me on Instagram, Jermaine on Natural, it's the exact same name here. I've shared over the past week, you know, lots of resources and things that I found on the internet as far as donating, things to educate yourself on, petitions to sign. I'll have everything linked down below in the description box. But I have several videos that are just ready to go, but it didn't feel right to me to talk about all the hair stuff and not address the 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 the, the catastrophic state that the the United States is in. It just my soul would not allow me to get on camera and be like, oh look at this cute twit. Like it I couldn't my wash and go like it didn't feel right for me to do that. It put me in a different space. Um, of just needing to pay attention and bring to light, just shed my own little light on my perspective and my view of the riots and law needing to change and the oppression of Black people in the United States. So this is my way of doing that. I've posted on my social media, I've donated, I've done petitions and things like that, and I still am doing it. Um, I just needed to address it and to, you know, kind of get this off of my heart. I'm an eternal optimist, so I'm aware of everything that's happening and I know that in some instances, sometimes things need to get burned down, you know, in order for an underlying issue that's been swept under the rug to now be brought to the forefront. Like I personally, like I said, in the maternal, I'm an inter eternal optimist. So in lieu of sharing videos and things like that, if you visit my Instagram, mine is mostly made up of resources. How do you deal with this mentally? There are, I've shared sources of, you know, speaking with therapists like that's my approach on things because everyone isn't a protester or a rioter and sometimes we need ways to express ourselves to decompress from everything to get away from it outside of just logging off of social media sometimes we need someone to talk to sometimes we need someone biased to talk to sometimes we need someone that can give us direction on navigating our feelings so that's my approach with the things that i've shared on my social media and a part of this video and the things that will be linked down below is more so resources uh, to help dealing with it, like I said, to help with the movement, to help people that are being oppressed and, and, and racially discriminated against. So that's my approach on everything that's happening. We're going through it, but we also still need that time for ourselves to re to reflect, you know, kind of step back from things and just take a moment, come up from air. A little bit because everything is all about what's happening right now and it's so much negativity in some of it and a lot of violence and just I personally need to sometimes step back from that because my energy doesn't move that way my energy is more light is more positivity and I can get down there and I can dig in there but I have to come up 
for some air from it in order for my spirit, my energy to continue in the way that I like for my for my inner being to be. Okay, spiel. Whole thing. <laughs> Half of that's gonna be cut off because this is eight minutes so far going on nine. The person that plays both fiddles, Pride Month, and also, you know, the uproars, the riots, change, everything that's happening right now is Marsha. Marsha P. Pay it no mind Johnson. That is what this piece of Black history about. Yeah, let's go back. Let's take it way back. So Marsha, who was originally born Malcolm Michael Jr., was born on August 24th, 1945 in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Marsha was one of seven siblings. So it was a bunch of them. Father was Malcolm Michael Sr., who worked at the plant, and mom was Alberta Claiborne, who worked as a housekeeper. At a young age, Marsha knew that she was different. She liked to dress in girls' clothes at a very, very young age, from what I read, age five, and everything will be linked below, because there are a lot of stories, you know, people in history, so it's a lot of variations in story. But it was said that five years old, she knew that you know, how she felt on the inside. And so she liked to dress in girls' clothes, but she didn't because of being teased by other children. So that was suppressed for years and years. So Marsha graduated in 1963, headed to the city. What, time to go. <laughs> found a good, well, she didn't find a good job in the city, but she hit it, hit it to the city. And at the time, just freshly graduating out of high school, you know, she, was free, she was feeling herself. And I think that's kind of general, that's normal for most teenagers. When you leave your parents' house, especially if you do it at a young age, you get out there. Well, part of that problem at that time in the 60s is that being a member of the LGBTQ community, it was illegal, 50s and 60s, it was illegal at that time. And you were very susceptible to being harassed, being beaten, generally taken to jail just for those reasons. That reasons. There was even a law about, it was called a three, artic three clothing article or less. So if, you know, um, if I'm a man and I'm wearing, you know, wig, um, a, a purse, a blouse, a jacket and a dress, I could go to jail for that it was it was a law like you could not wear more than three articles from the opposite sex or marsha went to jail well over a hundred times just for being herself just for literally being outside in that time of being young being in the city being on her own and being a teenager she didn't have any place to go so she was homeless and she was on the streets she ran into Sylvia Rivera, who was her best friend. And at the time, uh, from what I read, she was 13. So Marsha was 17, 18, and Sylvia was around 13, being like a big mother, or being a mother figure to her. The two were best friends at that moment. And by them both being young and being on the streets and in New York, they did what a lot of runaways and throwaways did at that time. They hit the straw. <laughs> and to make money. In the years leading up to the famous Stonewall Riots, Marsha and Sylvia were staples in the village, Greenwich Village, and the streets of New York. Sylvia, boisterous and loud, screaming equal rights. And you had Marsha that was there, warm, passionate, this motherly figure, you know, head normally in some type of elaborate secret wrap or a crown of flowers, you know, for her hair. Like that's like staples. And along the way, finding these other throwaway kids, these runaway kids, you know, everything that I saw showed that, you know, she had this warm spirit, this beautiful, warm smile and her smile was warm and very beautiful. But she was a mother. She was a mother to all of these people, making sure they had food, making sure that they had clothes if they needed it, giving them change, whatever change she had, she gave them. If they needed the clothes off of her back, she gave them to them. Then June 28th, 1969 comes along. Stonewall Inn Bar. So at this time, the Stonewall Inn Bar was run by the Mafia, as a lot of the gay bars at that time were, as a level of protection, but they were also blackmailing people, um, down low politicians and things like that. And at the same time, they were all male bars. Because of both of those reasons, these bars were normally rated well. 
June 28th, they decided to, to, to raid the Stonewall. This was the night to raid it. This is where the story gets... There, there are different versions of the story at this part. There are versions of the story that say that they raided the bar, they were trying to push them out, arrest everybody, and Marsha was right there in the bar and was like, not tonight. Threw a shot glass and that's where everything jumped off. Now there are other stories that says that it was a brick that she threw. There's another story um, and it is alleged to be Marsha's Marsha's testimony of the night where she said that she wasn't there. She was uptown, I believe it said, or believe she said she was uptown and heard about everything and then came down to the stone wall. Stuff was already inflamed. So either way, she was right there in the middle of everything happening. Now, as the story goes on into the that night, June 28th, that night and going into the riots the next few days, another few variations of the story. I've read where the riots went on for three nights. I've read where the riots went on for six nights. Either way, both Marsha and Sylvia were catalysts. They were right there in the middle of everything leading these riots and leading the protests and everything that was happening. They were tearing New York up. Burn it down for their rights, just for their rights, just to be humans, just to be able to walk down the street without being harassed, without being beaten, without being taken to jail. Their focus was to be equal. And there's plenty of footage of her just saying, listen, I just want my rights. It's not hard. I just want my rights. It's not too much to ask being, you know, a human. The days of riots led to the following year, 1970 of June, the very first Pride Parade. The 70s? The, the 70s? Not only was it great music at this time, personally I love the 70s music, but this decade was Marsha's year. Decade. How many people do you know can say they rode a high wave for a decade? To list several of the highs of the 70s that, that Marsha had was one, she developed the GLE, which is the Gay Liberation Front. She did this in New York and it grew. It grew to develop chapters in Paris, chapters in London, chapters in A. So it became a, a you know, kind of a global thing. Sylvia, her best friend who was there going through all of these riots, she developed STAR, which was the, the Street Transvestite Action Revolution, which to date, the T has been changed and is now the Street Transgender Action Revolution. Marsha was there with her and as her best friend, she was backing her, but that was Sylvia's, that was Sylvia's baby. But also in the 1970s, particularly in 1975, Marsha was photographed by Andy Warhol. She was part of his portraiture series, Ladies and Gentlemen. Also from what I, from what I read is that there's this impossible to find Earth, Wind and Fire album that she is the cover of. In one of the articles that I read, it was from her, it was a quote from her nephew and he was DJing in New York and he said he was pulling out an Earth, Wind and, Al Earth, Wind and Fire album and he saw Marsha, like his aunt was on the cover of this album. I searched, I wasn't able to find it. Hopefully somebody can find it. If you do, share it with me. Um, share it on Instagram, DM me on Instagram. She was also a member of the drag performance, Hot Peaches, which toured America and Europe. So she was definitely known around the globe. So with all of these events that she has going on, she still was active. She still was an activist and her activism and her activism went on from the 70s into the 80s. She was aligned with the daughters of Bilities. Bilities? I think it's Bilities. Bilties? Bilities? Bilities? Abilities, B-I-L-I-T-I-E-S. Make it work. <laughs> this was the first National Lesbian 
organization in the United States. It was a private organization, but it was the first one in the United States. She was also invited to ride in the lead car of the New York Pride Parade. She also was an activist for the AIDS epidemic that was happening, protesting and attending ACT UP meetings. She's doing all of these things and all the while still being a staple in the community, still being a staple in New York, still helping out kids, runaways, throwaways, giving them what she had, giving them food, giving them money, still being a mother, still being a guide to all of these children. And in this time period, she's doing all of these amazing things for her community, being visual, being seen, being wanted by people just for who she was, she also still was doing this while suffering from a mental illness and having mental breakdowns. July 6th in 1992, Marsha's body was found in the Hudson River. It is still a mystery as to what happened to her, but initially finding her, the police said that it was a suicide. There were many accounts and statements from her family and friends that this definitely wasn't a suicide, not with the life that she had with her, not with everything that she had going on. And in the 2017 documentary, The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson, uh, you'll see Victoria Cruz, who is a trans woman, opened up the, you know, started doing some work on her own, got them to reopen the case, and it's still a cold case, but through a lot of facts, through a lot of um, interviews with people that she knew and that were around at the time, which this uh, documentary is on Netflix. It is the, the Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson, 2017 documentary. They found that with, she found that with all of the evidence that she found, it was very unlikely that it was a suicide. And with everything that she presented and took to um, the authorities, they then changed her death from suicide to a murder. The case is still open. It's it's a cold case at this point, uh, but it is still open, I believe. And um, hopefully, you know, there will be more that comes of it because there was a lot of evidence and all the things that she did find surrounding her death. So Marsha P. Pay It No Mind, which she was known to say to several people when it asked about if she was a man or a woman. And it was even mentioned that she even said it to a judge once. So Marsha P. Pay It No Mind Johnson was my piece of Black History this month, highlighting Pride Month and why there is a Pride Month and also the revolution that her and her best friend Sylvia Rivera, a Latin woman, another person of color, sparked in order to get the change needed in this country for people of the LGBTQ community to have and to start getting equal rights that everybody else had. So once again, everything will be linked down below. There'll be articles. Make sure you go to Netflix, check out the documentary. There are a few other documentaries that are about her that you can look up. I feel like her story um, just with the bit that I shared with you is very important to this month in celebrating celebrating pride and also an example of sometimes the peaceful things are okay for a while and there are times where you have to go beyond the peace to get things done. Sometimes a protest is needed. That's all that I'm saying. Sometimes people need to get out of the street and shout that they need equality, which you shouldn't have to do, but sometimes it is necessary. Look out for the second Black History, Black History a, piece a Piece every month. Every month. Well, well, this, well, month, this month, Black History, Black History. Two, pieces two pieces this month. This month. And also look out for, you know, our regular videos on hair and, you know, everything else to come back up again. And once again, everything will be linked down below for resources. All right. Leave comments below. Let me know if you have any more details on Marsha P that maybe I left out. Let me know if you've seen the documentary. Make sure you like this video. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Punch the notification so you can stay abreast of when I post my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Until next time.